Hello everyone, welcome to the Manic Pixie Dream Vlog. I am your host, clearly. I'm Caroline Georges, and I kind of just wanted to talk about um, something that's uh, been on my mind lately. Uh, since the Michael Jackson's songs um, have been taken down from radio stations because of the documentary that has come out, <clears throat> Um, which is, I honestly, it's awful. I haven't been able to watch it all the way through. It's really awful. It's really some really heavy, really um, horrible things, uh, horrible stuff. Um, you just, um, first impressions is that you're seeing old footage of, of adorable little boys. Um, and it's, you just want to jump in to the screen and just go back in time and just stop whatever happens, whatever happened to those little boys from happening. It's really, um, I mean, if you just, if you care about kids, it's really just some really hard shit that you have to watch. Um, but the narrative is, is very telling. Um, I think they really, um, from what I can tell, it's very educational, I think, on grooming and of how abuse, um, how abusers operate. Um, obviously, on a much uh, less grand scale, they don't have, um, not everyone can afford an entire rape ranch. Um, but he definitely had a Peter Pan complex that was criminal. And um, I do know that pedophiles I refuse to acknowledge any person that says pedophilia as a sexual orientation is a fucking pedophile. Kill him. Fuck you. If you think pedophilia is a sexual orientation, it's not. It's just inherently predatory. You are it's it's inherently just an animal thing. Of um you have to be a fucking animal to want to have sex with a child. It's inhuman, it's disgusting, it's not natural, and it should never be acknowledged by any person as a sexual orientation. Children should never be sexualized in any way, including seeing pedophilia as a sexual orientation. You are sexualizing children when you acknowledge pedophilia as a sexual orientation. Fuck you. Um, anyways, so I will say I don't think people should um, not listen to these music to his music anymore um, if they if they um, and I'll tell you why I a lot of work goes into making a song a lot of work goes into making a movie a lot of work blood sweat and tears by a lot of different people goes into making art happen so if you're taking down Michael Jackson's music you are hurting artists <sighs> there are 12 people that have worked on the Michael Jackson Thriller song alone to produce it and to make it. Not the music video, but just the song. It was written and composed by Rod Temperman, produced by Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones is great. Who doesn't like Quincy Jones? And his daughter, um, fuck, I forget her first name, but um, she's Anne from Parks and Recreation. She's, um, she produced this really um, really great documentary called um, Hot Girls Wanted. It's about young women, 18, 19 year old women in the, entering the porn industry. And it's, it's, it's um, really a great documentary. I really highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. Um, let's see. Yeah, it, uh, Ra, uh, Brian Banks were the synth synth uh, was a synth synthesizer. Uh, Greg Phil Gaines was another synth synthesizer. Um, Anthony Marinelli was another synthesizer on the song. Um, David Williams played the guitar. Uh, Jerry Hay, Gar Gary Grant, trumpets, flug flugglehorns. Um, Larry Williams, saxophone and flute. Um, Bill uh, Reichenbach played the trombone. Um, vocal rhythm and synthesizer ar arrangements. Again, Ron Temperman. Um, and effects by Bruce Cannon and Bruce Sweetian. So that's about 12 people who are still earning residuals from this song. That song is paying, still paying people money that aren't Michael Jackson. And so you're taking money away from artists, from musicians. Um, 
who worked honestly on a song and made a great song. So why are you taking that away from them? And let's just go to the music video. Think of how many background dancers and how many people worked on that music video. That was probably the best thing that they've ever done in their life. That's probably the, you know, such a big deal for them. And why are you taking that away from them? You shouldn't. And so go, I mean, take that, just a song, go to a movie. You can't stop, I mean, think of all of the people who worked on a movie, on one of Kevin Spacey's movies, or on any of the Harvey Weinstein movies. Think of all of those people who are good, honest, hardworking artists, who work on movies, who's, you're taking money away from them. <clears throat> and if, I mean, <clears throat> it's just, why drop a bomb on people? Because they just, you know, had the misfortune of working with the wrong person. Shouldn't do that. But, um, I think it's great when people decide to stop working with people after the allegations are known. Um, I think it's great that, um, Kevin Spacey is not going to work again. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of fucked up meta project uh, he'll find for himself um, at some point, eventually one day. That's kind of my prediction. Um, but yeah, that's my thought on that. And then also Lady Gaga decided to take down um, the song uh, Do What You Want To My Body which um oh please don't it's it's a great song i really like the song a lot it's 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 wonderful and um the you know if you really um if you're if you're on youtube not on youtube it's not on youtube do Sorry, I don't have, I don't have editing equipment. I mean, actually, that's not true. I do. I actually have two editing. <laughs> I have Premiere and I have Avid. I just don't have editing equipment up here. So, um, it's, this video will not be edited, but I am entering in the AMA live performance and I'm going to watch it and just kind of break it down for you and just how big of a treat it is. It was just, it's wonderful. But, um... Uh oh, Jeremy Renner introduced it. Jeremy. American Music what were you Awards, thinking? Oh, American Music Awards. Yes, this is an American themed performance. Hold, please. American oh. themed performance. Kelly. What did America ever do to you, Lady Gaga? Okay, so, uh, uh, so Lady Gaga is a. Lady Gaga. Let me set the scene. Lady Gaga is, is R. Kelly's secretary, and R. Kelly is the president of the United States in this performance. Told you it was good. Okay, Lady Gaga has been working for him for six long years as a secretary. They never fucked. Oh, now he wants that Italian, and by he wants Italian for lunch. But I think we all, as we all know, I think he's looking for Lady Gaga's Italian heritage. He's alluding to that at least. Oh, she's excited. She's gonna go get um, sexually harassed by her boss, and she's excited. Oh, she's asking if he's okay. Oh, the tabloids make him want to scream because of the rumors of the allegations and stuff. So I will defend Lady Gaga at the time, and this is why. Until the R. Kelly documentary came out, my thought on what I've heard about the situation, and maybe Lady Gaga should have vetted the situation a little bit more, 
as she was more connected to the industry and stuff, and there were lawsuits of R. Kelly um, abusing young young children and um, children. Uh, and I know my thoughts on it were that the whole girl, the, the girl situation where he peed on this girl, um, I thought they, she had got in some place with a fake ID and met him. He thought she was 18 or over and they went back to his hotel room or whatever and, and mistakes were made. And that was the situation. That was totally my understanding. I was completely ignorant of the fact that this little girl um, was, uh, he was friends with her family, how he met her. He would go to her basketball games. That's how sick this piece of shit was. He would go to this little girl's basketball games. And that she would do at junior high or whatever. And it's like, ugh, could you imagine how, like, how sick you have to be to, like, be a like an older brother figure to somebody. But that's what abusers do. They're total groomers. Um, they convince themselves that they care about the person and that justifies abusing them. Um, ugh, that's sick. It's very sick. No, R. Kelly, you never say do what you want to pieces of shit like R. Kelly. I'm sorry. If anybody has an allegation against him, just reaffirm, don't do what you want. Because um, if you tell people like R. Kelly to do what they want, they will. And, um, <clears throat> and when they do what they want, they um, rape children. Um, a detail um, you missed, two background dancers popped up from underneath the desk. The president's desk. What were they doing there? Um, so she's dancing for him on the desk. He's reclined, enjoying himself. Kind of like a strip club. Um, oh, and so now his bodyguards, the president's bodyguards, um, security team have uh, joined in the dancing. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's, um, um, Ooh, you know, it's so chilling hearing him, him just sing that, do what I want to your body. Ugh. Like, it's chilling. It's actually chilling. It's so funny now that he's like calling like his accusers of like child molestation haters. It's so like ugh, it's just something about that is just so um I don't know. Just now it's satisfying that he's just, that he's saying that. It's so funny. You can't stop my voice. So, I want to take this time to tell you guys about survival sex. Um, there are women who, when a sexual assault occurs, um, when un unconsensual sex, and when a rape s happens, they'll just, um, you know, you might as well lean back and enjoy it kind of attitude. Women have adopted that. It's actually pretty common. Women will um, just make the rape consensual. Um, I have a friend um, from my hometown um, who she um, she gave this guy a ride home from the bar and he um, he raped her in her car um, and she said that she um, took control of the situation by getting on top and by um, and by she got on top. Um, and that was how um, I guess she took control of the situation and made it less um, a, a disturbing situation for her. Um, but it was um, something that greatly affected her for a long time. 
Um, it was very hard to see her go through um, what she went through afterwards. Um, and I, so it's, it happens. It for sure happens. Um, so I, if this song has any meaning, um, it was, it was written by a woman who is claiming to have been raped by a producer. So, um, I think this song actually has some meaning for rape victims that I think women can now find value in. Um, and the fact that, um, R. Kelly is saying, I'll do what you want, I want to your body, knowing that he's fully a rapist, I mean, it kind of works for this song in a fucked up way, in sort of like a avant-garde way, I guess, which Lady Gaga is. She's a very avant-garde artist. And she's very appreciated for that. And I think I appreciate that she used rapists for props. In the music video for this song, it was directed by Terry Richardson. And Terry Richardson would, um, his allegations were, he... He hired models that weren't models. They were normal girls. Um, uh, a lot of the criticism of these young women was that they weren't beautiful and that they were get, that they were maybe prostitutes. Somehow that makes raping them okay, I guess. Um, and that's literally what I've heard people say <laughs> about it because the, the women that he raped um, and during these photo shoots weren't models and they weren't beautiful. One of them was a little overweight. Um, their rapes weren't valid, I guess. <clears throat> okay. But, uh, she, he directed the music video for her. And so did Lady Gaga use rapists as props? for this song that could very well, very easily be interpreted as a woman accepting being raped and not letting it destroy her. She put pictures of him on Instagram the most unforgivable crime one can commit against another person. Oh, he's left her. She's collapsed on the ground. Oh, her heart is broken. Okay, so his Secret Service agent is asking, R. Kelly just said he didn't know her after she worked for him for six long years as his secretary and delivered him her Italian body for lunch. Okay, now she's on a piano. This is, she's on, she's on a piano in front of a video of her as this little Italian girl, her, uh, like an old footage of her as a kid playing a piano looking super Italian and uh, yeah um, inner child stuff is a big thing in like um, in uh, women who are overcoming rape and abuse and stuff it's the inner child exercises and stuff is a big big thing so I um, I think that says something Okay, so now there's tabloids, images of tabloids going on behind her. Can't make out what they say. Tabloids say... Lady Gaga is fat. <laughs> That's what the tabloids say in the background. Lady Gaga is fat. Oh, fuck them. I would write and produce a song um, and perform at the AMAs if anyone were to call me fat in the tabloids. I would totally respond. That's totally my response. 
yeah, call Lady Gaga fat, she'll reply with working with R. Kelly. Because fuck you. I'm not fucking fat. Um, so one thing I wonder about, nobody gives a shit about, think of all of, like every, like think of John Wayne. Think of, I mean, well, Clark Gable is a good example. But like think of all of these old timey actors Errol Flynn, for example, was a real, I mean, that was a real piece of shit there. Man, that guy is in hell. Um, but everyone is fine with those actors. Nobody's, like, saying don't watch Errol Flynn movies. No one's saying don't watch John Wayne movies. Nobody's saying that. You know why? Because, I don't know. My thought is, back in the day when John Wayne and when Errol Flynn and when Clark Gable were working, they were under contracts. Um, with studios. They weren't being paid residuals from the movies that they worked on. They would earn a, a yearly salary working on whatever on a, working on whatever movies they were contracted to work with under the studio. Roles that were oftentimes not even chosen by them. Um, fun fact, Clark Gable didn't actually want to work on, didn't actually want to do Gone with the Wind and he hated it and he thought it was, um, he, um, he thought it was a woman's picture. And that's why he didn't like it. Um, so this might surprise you when Clark Gable um, destroyed a young woman's career. Um, her name was your Loretta Young. Heard of her? No, you probably haven't. She's not a household name. Nobody knows who she is because her career was destroyed um, because she um, had a baby out of wedlock. A baby that was the product of rape when Clark Gable raped her. There is, um, <clears throat> um, so we don't know who Loretta Young is because her career ended when she was 20 years old because she was raped and was impregnated from the rape and it destroyed her career. Um, and so I wonder, because actors didn't earn residuals, from these films and because these movies were put on by studios and were owned by studios and actors really had no right to their work back then in the way that they do now, I wonder if that has something to do with it. Um, because now it's um, actors, you know, are paid per film and uh, under certain, and the contracts are, are done differently now. Um, and so I wonder if that has something to do with it. But it's just a thought. But anyways, Loretta Young, you don't know her, and you never will because she was raped. And um, it's a real tragedy. It's a really unfortunate um, uh, thing to have occurred in history, and in uh, the history of the industry. And, um, and so if we're still watching Gone with the Wind, which I do, I still watch Gone with the Wind. I watch Gone with the Wind every year. And, uh, and I, I love um, uh, It Happened One Night. That's one of my favorite romantic comedies. It Happened One Night is just oh, it's such a great movie. And you couldn't stop me from watching it, even though I'm watching an actor who destroyed a young woman's life. And I'm seeing the, that person do, you know, be a character and I accept that person as a character as opposed to um, separate from the actor, separate from the person. So if we're not, if, if we're not you know, are we going to, like, cancel AMC, you know? Are we going to cancel, like, uh, Turner Classic Films on, on are we going to, like, completely, like, just take out that channel? Because every actor that probably starred in any movie, like, from the 1950s below is probably a fucking date rapist. Um, if we're not doing that, then I don't think we should banish songs from Michael Jackson from radio stations. That's just what I think. But um, the Lady Gaga um, a uh, AMA performance in 2013, look it up, it's great. Um, yeah, I think that that's my episode. Enjoy, have a lovely day, bye.